Welcome to Train Sim World, an immersive and highly detailed rail simulation featuring authentic routes and trains from around the world. This is the training center. Here you can learn about how to navigate and interact with the world as well as how to operate the many trains. Let's start by looking around. Find each of the markers and look at them. Your current objective is shown at the top left of the screen. Walk to the blue mark. Marker to complete the current objective. You've been awarded some action points. These are displayed in the top right corner of the screen and count towards your overall experience level for the game. This is one of the many types of route tasks to be discovered. Keep an eye out for many more types and styles of route tasks, which can involve placing, collecting, or fixing a variety of things. Head into the main building and you'll continue your induction there. You can pause Train Sim World at any point to review objectives and a lot of other information about what's happening at the moment. Try it now. Now that we've covered some of the basics of moving around and interacting with the environment, let's take a walk through the building and find the trains. This is Central Square. From here you can explore the main training center depot and surrounding yards. Your journey operating trains is just getting started here in the training center. Remember, you can always come back here from the main menu to continue. This module will cover the on-screen overlay, known as the heads-up display or HUD, that is shown when you are in control of a train. Climb up the ladder into the locomotive and then sit in the seat. Welcome to the most important seat in the train. While sitting here, you'll be in full control. Before you think about moving the train, though, let's look at the HUD overlay that's appeared on the bottom right. The heads-up display is a guide to what your train is doing. The main part of the HUD is the speed display. A white bar will appear around the outside to show your current speed, and the red mark indicates your maximum permitted speed. This is the direction display. An arrow will indicate forward, reverse, and neutral directions. This is the power display. A number will indicate what position the power or throttle control is in. These are the brake indicators. The exact ones shown will vary by train and will often be visible in the train itself on various gauges. They tell you what's happening in the braking system. The most important one is the BC or brake cylinder. If that's reading zero, then your brakes are released. Anything else? And brakes are applied and you won't be able to move. Every train can have small variations in the HUD unique to the way it works, but they will mostly look the same. As you learn to control new trains, study the HUD and learn how it helps you operate it. If you want to see this again, you can rerun this training module at any time.
In this training module, you're going to look at making the train move and then bringing it to a stop again. While many trains have different controls and are operated in different ways, there are basically always three controls that are common and are required to move the train. The reverser sets the direction between forwards and backwards. The brakes are used to slow or stop the train. The throttle controls how fast the train accelerates. We want to move the train forwards, so move the reverser and... Keep the brake control and release until you can see the brake pipe control needles are reading 5 bar, pointing upwards. This will release the brakes fully. Watch the brake cylinder, or BC gauge, to see a gradually reduced... Apply some throttle to get the train moving. As you apply power, notice the amp bar rising. This is the amount of power being fed into the traction motors. Now that you've reached your target speed, you can move the throttle control back to zero. The train will then coast on level ground and the train will only slow down very gradually. While the specifics of operating brakes vary from train to train, the basic process of stopping is fundamentally the same. Bring this train to a complete stop by holding the brake control in the apply state until you see the brake pipe control needle in the center of your cab desk showing about 4 bar. The amount of braking you'll need to apply also varies depending on whether you're going uphill or downhill, and how heavy your train is. That concludes this module. Restart the module to learn the steps again, or move on to the next module. This module will go over the fundamentals of operating junctions to change the path your train will take and how to navigate using the map. Most rail lines around the world are controlled remotely by a signaling center or dispatcher. From the perspective of the train, the direction taken is automatic. But within yards and depots, many small and frequent movements are required. This makes remote control of the track impractical. In these locations, the direction taken is manually controlled. You can set junctions by either walking up to them and interacting with them, or going to the 2D map and changing them from there. Let's change this junction by hand first. Walk over to it and change it by operating the lever. Notice how the point blades move on the track. Try moving it a few more times until you can see how it works. Let's head over to the train, and then we can look at the map. 